Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My family and I moved here to Racine on June 3rd, 2013. St. John's and the city around us have been home since that point. And of course, moving here was quite a process. It's something that we were grateful to go through and something that we are glad to have avoided moving away from a short time ago. But when we moved here, there were many details to take care of and new surroundings to take in. Though we had a house lined up for purchase, shortly before the closing date, the IRS stepped in and stopped it due to unpaid income taxes on the part of the seller. So when the doors to that house were closed, we suddenly had nowhere to live. Thankfully, an impromptu plan was enacted, and a home was open to us until we could find something more permanent. So when the move day came, a truck brought whatever earthly possessions we claimed as our own from Indiana, and they took it to a warehouse located on Douglas Avenue. Then, that day, we took our essential items into the home in Wind Point that had been so graciously willing to accept us. And while that move itself went forward, the smaller and fewer items, Dave Milliger, one of the members here, was helping me out. As we were carrying boxes from my car, I heard a strange noise, and I asked him about it. That noise was what I now call the lake tone, which I believed was coming from the Wind Point Lighthouse or that platform out on Lake Michigan off of North Beach. I have very recently since learned that, in fact, it comes from the South Pier over by the marina. But initially, I thought that that sound would be an annoyance, something that would always be going on as I lived here in Racine. And I wondered why the incessant, intrusive tone for those who are not out on the water in a boat. Matthew's Gospel, his recording of the resurrection account. Now, after the Sabbath... Toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. Matthew records for us what are literally ground-shaking events. This is something that holds for us and for all time. At the same time, this is a confusing and frightening sight to behold. The guards assigned to our Lord's tomb fell to the ground and lost consciousness. Mary Magdalene and those with her did not know what they were walking into. An angel was there to demonstrate Christ's victory over death, but that victory had not yet been pronounced to them or witnessed by them. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. When I first heard the lake tone and asked about it, Dave told me that it was a sound that I did well to become accustomed to. And if you go out by North Beach today or anywhere close to the lake in town, I'm guessing that you will hear it yourself. Well, I first thought that it would be an annoyance. I have since found it to be something that I enjoy and I'm thankful to hear, even from my own backyard. When my daughters hear it and ask what it is or why it's there, I tell them that it's a nice reminder that we live very close to Lake Michigan. And whether or not you think a lot about our proximity to a great lake, it is always there, and many people are thankful that it is. We use it for the resources that it brings, water, fishing, recreation, and the like. The guards at Jesus' tomb did not know what to do as the earth shook underneath them and as an angel took his seat upon the rock that had once sealed his tomb. The women who came there were also confused, and the angel, the messenger of God, told them not to fear, but instead to know that Jesus was alive again. This was an amazing message that he relayed, and this is the very promise that we hold to right now. 
This is, in fact, the same promise that we hold to every Sunday as we are gathered in the divine service each week. It's always there. But do we always use it? Do we sometimes set it aside and then take it back up when it's convenient? Do we assume it will be there whenever we want it and then establish our own terms for how and when we will attend? This is sin, and it demands repentance. Easter 2020 will certainly be remembered as an uncertain and strange time in history. This sanctuary is all but empty except for eight people, and this is a very difficult thing. In fact, I'm staring into the lens of a laptop computer as it broadcasts the sights and sounds of our service over the Internet. This is not how we celebrate Christ's resurrection. This is not normal. The church here at St. John's is not available to us as it always seemed it would be on this most important day. And with this, we must acknowledge that something is missing while we live in these uncertain times of sickness and restrictions and even the suspension of our public worship services. For far too many, Easter is the day that attending a worship service is always there, an assumption that, of course, must be worked around. And then, as Holy Week rushes and happens upon us, Easter Sunday suddenly becomes a priority. In sin, of course, the Sundays before and after it are cast aside. Well, we are all in that position now, every last one of us as members of St. John's, whether we're here every Sunday or whether we're not. But we stand firmly on what Matthew's account shows us, even in these difficult times of separation from one another. Those who are charged with guarding the tomb of our Lord, they fell to the ground as that ground shook and quaked. We who believe by God's grace know that we have something permanent and immovable. Jesus Christ has destroyed death by his going through it himself. He rose again on this day as we celebrate it in whatever way we can, and we are connected to his victory through holy baptism and from the altar in holy communion. But at this time, on this day, we cannot enter our sanctuary altogether, and we cannot receive the furtherment of our baptismal promise from the altar. But we can, through his word, know today and every day that death has been defeated. The lake tone here in Racine sounds every four or five seconds, and yet God's word is available to us every second and every minute of the day. Do we use it every day? Do we find it to be intrusive or annoying on Sunday morning or on any morning? Do we cherish it and treasure it as we should? It is there always for us to hear and make use of. It is there to convict us of our sin and to point us to our risen Savior who removes our sin. This time of spreading sickness and separation is most certainly a call from the Lord to look to His strength and not to our own. It is also a call to repentance from our sin and for us to make consistent use of His Word to daily hear and be connected to His promises. The women at the tomb heard the message of God's angels on that amazing morning. They didn't know what to make of what they heard and saw. When I first moved here to Racine, I didn't know what the lake tone was when I heard it. I have since grown accustomed to it. And the women grew accustomed to that message and those sights too. But they did far more that day. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. We who are alive today here at St. John's and throughout this country and world, we do not go to Galilee to see Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, but he comes to us nonetheless. We go not to the empty tomb to look for him, but he comes to us even still. He speaks to us at all times through his word. He meets us at the font in holy baptism and consistently at the altar in holy communion as he shares with us his very body and blood to eat and to drink for the forgiveness of our sins 
and the strengthening of our faith. He is steady and constant, immovable and unchanging in His love for His people as He delivers it to us by word and sacrament. He has seen fit to keep us from coming together as a church this Easter. And not being together for worship on this, the day of our Lord's resurrection, I hope feels earth-shaking for every last one of us. So remember this Easter, April 12, 2020. Remember it and talk about it with your friends and your family and your co-workers and your neighbors and, most especially, your children, if you have any, in your home. Show them what we lost this year and show them what we have ready access to each Sunday when these restrictions are lifted. In the meantime, use His Word every day in your home as it points us to His death, resurrection, and the destruction of death and the forgiveness of sins that we know as He delivers to us by His grace. Use it now and be consistent in that even after we can come to... and be consistent in that even after we can come together in worship. By doing this, you will demonstrate your faith to others in the midst of what we now face in these bizarre and unexpected times, knowing that death and even time itself is in His hands. We continue on into these uncertain days, standing with confidence on our Lord's resurrection and the certainty He consistently delivers to us in His Word and sacraments, while also looking to the last day when He will take us, all of His believing people, into the new creation, where sin is completely removed from us and His constant love and presence will surround us. Amen.